Greetings and salutations my dearest friends, my name is Samantha and today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 favorite authors. How are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, I'm a little hectic in this video because I just woke up from a nap and everything feels weird. And also I actually filmed this already and I deleted the footage. I don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. But today we are here and I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite authors. These are the authors that are my go-to. Okay, here's the criteria. I have read at least, at least five books from each author and all of their books that I've read from them, I've given mainly five stars. So these are authors that I've consistently read from and I consistently love. The type of authors that I just know like in my soul, deep in my soul that I'm going to love their books. They always deliver. Whenever I'm in a reading slump, these are the authors that I'm going to. Whenever someone asks for recommendations, these are the authors I'm recommending. And I don't know why, but I feel sentimental towards a lot of these authors too. We talk about my two circle romance authors that are just like top favorites, all time favorite authors. The first one, honestly, it comes as no surprise, and that is Miss Lisa Kleypas. It's so funny because Lisa Kleypas was actually, I think, the first historical romance author that I've read from. I started at, like, the top of the top because her books just continue to be my favorite, and I love them, and I'm always recommending them. Lisa Kleypas has been writing for a while. I think her first book came out in, like, 87, 89, so she's been writing since at least the early 90s. Most of her books are historical, and they take place in London. I either during the Regency time period or right after the Regency time period. She does have some contemporary romances as well that I love just as much. I've read dozens of her books and given all of them five stars. I might have given maybe one or two four stars but again I just love her books to pieces. She has a very extensive backlist because she's been writing for so long and a lot of her series do connect and they're just very enjoyable to read. I haven't read all of her books yet. Uh, there was a point in time where I was literally reading her books every single day and then I was just flying through her backlist and I was like okay Samantha you need to press pause you need to you know savor these for a series like the Ravenel series I have not gotten to yet because that's like my break in case of emergency series where if I'm having a bad day or if I'm in a reading slump like I know that Lisa Kleypas has me and I can pick up one of her books and it's gonna be a fun time so if I had to recommend my favorite book from her I was put on this earth this earth to convince people to read this book it is my sole purpose I literally will not shut up about this book and I mean for very good reason because it's flawless it's wonderful it's perfect so this is a like I said prequel to the Wallflower series you don't have to read it in order but I do feel like it's more enjoyable if you do this follows a angsty second chance romance between our characters Lady Eileen and McKenna There's two romances in this book but it really focuses on the second chance romance predominantly so Lady Eileen and our hero McKenna were childhood sweethearts they grew up together they've always been connected and fell in love with each other but there is a bit of a class difference Lady Eileen is the daughter of a nobleman and her father does not approve of the relationship he expects her to marry into British nobility so something happens where the couple is separated it's heartbreaking it's sad and many years later McKenna is actually back in London he went to America made himself a self-made man got some shmoney on him and now he's back in London with a vengeance because he wants to show Miss Eileen everything that she's been missing like she broke his heart okay so angsty sweet perfect beautifully romantic and the second romance in here between lady eileen's sister and her hero gideon so cute i stop stop it right now this is the perfect book like honestly the ways that i feel about this book is something really special it's ingrained in my soul my heart my corazón you know someone was like samantha right now what is your favorite book of all time Again, the magic, no hesitation. Ever read a Beverly Jenkins book? Wh where have you been exactly? 
We need to fix that, babe. We really do. Bill Jenkins also has a pretty extensive backlist. She writes historical romance, uh, romantic suspense. She even writes inspirational romances. The ones that I'm more familiar with are her historical romances, and I have read dozens of them, and I adore every single one. A lot of her historical romances are set in America around the 1800s. It really sets her apart for me, just makes her the best of the best, is her books are sweepingly romantic. They are some of the most romantic books I have ever read in my life and her books are interwoven with so much culture and history and beautiful writing sorry my phone is going off but her writing is truly so stunning and I just I hold her books dear to my heart so actually able to talk to Beverly Jenkins I did an interview with her on Jessica's channel from Peace of Books and I was able to talk to her and like see her face hear her voice I'm obsessed I love her honestly to pieces I could cry when I filmed that interview I literally cried afterwards. I was so excited. That was my love for her. Like if I mentioned my favorite author, my family's immediately like, oh, Beverly Jenkins, we know, we know. If they see a Beverly Jenkins like book in the bookstore, they immediately grab it for me because they know like how rare some of her covers are. I love her. A lot of her books and characters and series also connects, but you can read them as standalones. So this one, it takes place during the Underground Railroad. Our heroine Hester ends up meeting our hero Galen during the Underground Railroad under his moniker, the Black Daniel. He is known for freeing African-American slaves during this time and he is injured. So he ends up going to one of her safe houses and she kind of nurses him back to health and it follows their beautiful romance. This is probably the most romantic book I've ever read in my life. That is a very bold statement because you know I love me some romance books, but this, their relationship, the most romantic thing I've ever, ever read about. I don't want to give any spoilers, but this book has a marriage proposal in it and it is the best, most romantic marriage proposal I've ever read in my in my life. I literally just keep repeating the same things because I just cannot stress how much you need to read her, how amazing she is, what amazing work she does. She is literally a master of her craft. She honestly needs to do a workshop because the way that she writes, the love that her characters share, her stories are so unique, so th thoughtful and well written, and the history, the culture that is beautifully interwoven into the stories. I could go on and on and on. Love, absolutely love. She just hits it on the mark every damn time. Flawless, absolutely flawless chef's kiss. It's the next author is actually a new to me author. We all know and love her, are really popular, and she's really popular. And okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. But I just started reading her this year and she's already made it. She's catapulted herself into my top tier authors, my top five favorite authors. And that is Miss Sophie Lark. We love her. We love her. I actually got to meet her in a polycon and I literally cried. Tears were streaming down my face at seeing her glorious self because I just love her so much. Anyways, so she writes predominantly mafia romances and a lot of her books are available on Kindle Unlimited. I will say, um, I tr used to trash mafia romances. I, I did, yeah. I drug them through the mud. I said I hated mafia romances. I didn't like mafia romances and then I read Sophie Lark and my entire life changed. My entire life changed. Anytime I think of Sophie Lark, I always think of Jen from the book Refuge because she's the one who really got me to read Sophie Lark and told me like, hey, I know you don't like mafia romances, but I really think you're going to like her books in particular. And she gave me like a reading order. And every time I finished a book, I would message her and she was just so sweet. And I love her. I love you, Jen. But yes, Sophie Lark is one of those authors that I binged like her entire backlist in like a month because I just could not stop reading her. It was like book after book after book. I just was obsessed, still am obsessed. So like I said, Mafia Romances, what I love about Sophie Lark in particular is all of her books connect. So each series kind of like leads into itself. You have the Brutal Birthright series that follows uh, different mafia families and all of their families and the side characters. And then it leads into the Kingmaker series, which follows all of those characters' kids, which leads into the Underworld series, which follows even more characters. And they're all connected in like this masterful plan and when you read her books in order and you get to the end and you see the progression in the arc you're like you have this plan the whole time 
Like, you are literally a genius. The world she creates. She has truly blessed us with her books, honestly. Anyways, love her Brutal Birthright series. I'm so obsessed with her Brutal Birthright series that I got a tattoo for this series. I know that's a little crazy, but I did. So I have been wanting a bookish tattoo for like the longest time. And I didn't want like an actual book. I just wanted something that would maybe like reference a book or like to me it had meaning and made sense. So, so I got one and I literally just got it today. This is a strawberry. Can you tell? I feel like you can tell. It's a strawberry. Just a little widow baby strawberry. I'm just a baby. Um, and it's because of Brutal Prince. If you've never read this book, I don't want to tell you what it means because it's so funny when you actually read it in the book. But if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Well, if you have the illustrated copy, you know because it's literally a strawberry on that. But yeah, I got a tattoo for it. Probably I'm going to get a tattoo for Again the Magic, like... Because these books, honestly, like I said, they're ingrained in my soul. Any hoozles, actually, although I do love the Brutal Birthright series, and this is the first book in the series, if I had to pick a favorite from her, it would actually probably be the second book in that series, which is Stolen Air. This is an Enemies to Lovers Beauty and the Beast retelling. It follows our our hero. Uh, he kidnaps our heroine. He, he does. Yep, he does. So in the first book, there's like turf wars going on and he ends up kidnapping the daughter of the Irish mafia because the Irish and the Italian mafia like really pissed off our hero because of some things that went down in the first book. I don't want to ruin it. And he ends up kidnapping her for revenge, but also for ransom. And they fall in love and it's beautiful. The sexual tension, the romance, the beauty and the beast retelling flawless, fabulous, wonderful. I love this hero so much. He's my favorite hero ever written. I love him. So yes, yeah, Sophie Lark. And she's also so freaking sweet. Like when I met her in person and like how she interacts with people on social media, her and her husband, like honestly, they're so sweet and I love them. And I just love her books and they're honestly just so special to me. And yeah, so Sophie Lark, definitely one of my favorite authors. All right, moving on, I'm going to mention an author who writes really good polyamorous romances or polyamorous reverse harem white shoes romances. You guys know me. You know, you know, I love a poly romance. It is literally my favorite thing ever. I am convinced that everything is better when there's more than two people. I'm really convinced that that is the truth. So one of my favorite authors that I feel like hits it every single time with this genre is Catherine Moon. Catherine Moon, I love her to pieces. I feel like she is a really popular author because a lot of people like her book, A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor, which is a monster romance. I have it on my shelves, but I'm too lazy to grab it. But she writes so much. Like she has that series, which is a monster romance series. She has an Omegaverse series. She has a priest romance with like three priests, a demon succubus and an angel. Her books are so unique and she just gives it to me every single time. I pretty sure if I'm not mistaken I've read every single book that she's written I've read her entire backlist the only things I haven't written are like what's currently on her patreon and hasn't been published yet but I think I've read every single book that is available and I've given pretty much all of them five stars because I love her I truly truly do she gives the unique storylines she gives the steam oh she gives some steamy 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 scenes and she gives sword crossing and poly romances and literally everything I could want and her books are on Kindle Unlimited enough said enough said if I had to pick one book oh I'm gonna actually do probably like a deep dive in all of these authors where I talk about their entire backlist um and Catherine Moon is one of those authors that I really want to do because I have read her entire backlist oh god damn if I have to pick one it's probably the Librarian's Coven series. The first book in that series is written. And this is a really unique storyline. A lot of her books have like a little bit of magic thrown in. Uh, she doesn't really write contemporary. A lot of them are like paranormal or magical or monster romances. So this one, our heroine works at a magical college and she's a librarian. But she doesn't have any magic of her own or <laughs> so she thinks. Spoiler alert, she has some pretty badass magic really really cool magic in this series and she ends up working at this library and meeting three handsome professors who are witches witches warlocks they're men so they're warlocks but in the book they're, they're called witches anyways 
she meets these three professors who are searching for a fourth person in their relationship to complete their coven. So in this kind of world, witches end up mating with multiple people to create families and to create covens. Meet her, they instantly feel like she is the person to complete their coven, like she is their fated mate. And there is four books in total in this series because there's four characters. So each book kind of goes over each character's story and what type of magic that they possess. And it really is so unique like I've never read like a magical fantasy book quite like this before so it's also polyamorous meaning that all of the characters are both emotionally physically and intimately in a relationship has sword crossing and I think this is one of the best polyamorous romances that I've read because it goes over everything it takes to kind of like make that type of dynamic work like the communication the intimacy like everything it's divine. It's wonderful. It's great. I love it to pieces. This last author, I was like, ah, oh, going back and forth. I was like, what about this author? And what about this author? Because there truly is so many authors that I love. But then when I think about it, I'm like, mm, I liked this book by them, but not this book. Or I've only read maybe three books for them. Like I'm trying to pick authors that I'm very familiar with and I consistently go back with. And I have to give the spot to a novella author which I feel like is kind of crazy because it's a novella. The authors that I love so much is because of their writing style or their intricate plots and like this next author literally writes books that are only like 80 pages but I love them. So I'm someone who tends to read a lot of novellas. I tend to go through a lot of reading slumps. A novella author that I have started to read from I discovered her because of Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings and I've done so many videos on this novella author literally cannot shut up about her because she's perfect and that's Casey Mint. I love Casey Mint. Her novellas are divine. She writes honestly god dang how many books has she written at this point they're all on Kindle Unlimited at least over like 20-30 books and I've read most of them. What I like about her books is that they are angsty, they are steamy, but they're also so sweet. It's kind of impressive how she is able to write these intricate romantic romances that are so believable, but she's like packing it in like these tiny little cute packages of 80 pages. Just like, here you go, enjoy. But her characters have like depth and like they're not just steamy romances, like ugh. I love them. A lot of them are age gap romances. She does a lot of like themes. So she'll have like a summer theme or a winter theme or a she has like a theme that's with plus size heroes and she'll write like seven novellas all following that theme and though they can be read as standalones they can also be read together. I'm convinced she's the best novella author ever. The best. If I had to pick one, just one of her books, that's hard. I think I would go with Big Bet. So this is a part of her big boy series, which is that plus size hero series I was talking about. Friends to Lovers Romance, which is my favorite trope ever. It's my favorite trope ever. And it follows a burlesque dancer and a blackjack dealer. They work together and they're like always walking each other home and going on lunch dates with each other. I really wanted to ruin their relationship, but finally they decide to like take that extra step and explore the romance. And it is so... Oh God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't even want to talk about it. It The ways, the ways it makes me feel. I love it so much. Leave Rachel's channel down below because she has a lot of good novella recommendations because she reads a lot of novellas. So I will leave it down below. Thank you, Rachel, for introducing to me to Casey Mint. Sorry, I got tongue-tied. Uh, one of my favorite authors. Forever grateful. Love you so much. Um, yeah, so those are my top five favorite authors. Lisa Kleypas, Beverly Jenkins, Sophie Lark, Catherine Moon, Casey Mint. We have a novella author, contemporary author, historical romance. I feel like that is like, if I could only read from this pool of authors, I think I would be like set for life. I really would. Although, oh gosh, there are really so many authors that I love. Like Katie Roberts, love her. Love her so much. Her series, which is like a BDSM romance where it's a twist on Disney tales where the villains are the heroes. Of that series learn my lesson it's a poly romance between Hades Meg and Hercules oh love it so much I have to mention her as well because I really do love her Sierra Simone love her book Sarah McLean love her books okay I'm just gonna literally list so many authors but I have to cut it off this was supposed to be a top five okay I love you guys so much do you guys like some of these authors who are your top five favorite authors I would love if you commented your top five so I can read them
I would love that. It would make me so happy. And maybe we share some of the same authors. Anyways, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the world to me. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Do you guys want to see the other tattoos I got today? Oh, it's bleeding. Um, I got this semicolon but I instead of like the circle I did a heart right there and then I have all of my siblings zodiac signs so like this one's mine a crab for me because I'm a cancer a Pisces uh, a fish because my sister is a Pisces a Scorpio because my brother is a Scorpio um, I have one for my sister and then I just felt like I was missing my parents so I did uh, the Aquarius symbol right next honestly the Aquarius symbol looks like waves to me so I put it right next to the fish because I feel like that just made the most sense to me um yeah so I got a couple tattoos today I got three today and like for some reason they're like really bruising up so that they're in bandages so I don't feel like they look as cute as they will when they're healed you know they're gonna look real cute they're gonna look real cute